Okay, so welcome everyone. Today we have the homeschooling and Brett Bauer is here to lead us through um, what the is all about and answer your questions. So welcome, welcome to the, the webinar, Brett. Well, thank you very much, Judy. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to be here this morning and thank you uh, to everyone who's attending this morning. Um, definitely thank you for taking time out of your day to, to find out more about homeschooling. So Judy, is there an opportunity for me to interact with those who are attending? I forgot to ask that before. Um, this is more a webinar rather than a meeting. So I, okay. um, I encourage everyone, write your questions in the chat group and okay. um, I will relay the questions to you, Brett. If, but if you actually wanna chat with people, we can just unmute them too. Yeah, I'd, I'd be fine with that. Okay, yeah. So everybody, if you have a question, write a question and I'll just unmute you and um, you can chat with Brett. Okay, thanks. One reason I, I asked for that, Judy, um, is people who attend oftentimes are coming from so many different backgrounds and experience levels that some of my uh, responses and even the, the information I share will be, uh, could be custom tailored to, to those uh, individual people's needs and backgrounds. So I'll start off with the broad scope, kind of the 30,000 foot view. And then uh, those of you who are attending, please feel free to jump in and ask for clarification, if you, especially if you're brand new, because there is a lot of jargon that is in homeschooling. And I just, you know, I've been around it so long, sometimes I forget uh, the the homeschool ease that I'm saying it might not not might not might might not be clear to those who are new to homeschooling. So with that said, I'll jump right into uh, what I'd like to share this morning. And and the first thing is just to ask the question, you know, why are you homeschooling? Why are you home educating? And that's really going. The answer you give to yourself is the driving force and really the driving factor for all of your decisions. It will affect everything, you know, the how, when, where, and why. So I wanted to start off with uh, just a, a bit of a story on my background because I did not grow up homeschooling. I went to school, you know, K to 12. My mom is a retired school teacher. And I also, you know, rabbit trail on that, uh, had my own experiences with my mom, you know, doubting my wife and, and my decision to homeschool. And, uh, you know, so have that bit of a backstory as well. So I didn't start with homeschooling. I had no frame of reference for homeschooling um, until I started getting into it myself. And I'm a school teacher, obviously. So I started very school-ish. And uh, I started with something called the Spalding Method, if anyone's familiar with that. Um, I would not recommend it, haven't gone through it. But the point of bringing this up is I went very structured, very school-ish at home because that was my background and my mentality. And uh, my younger son, uh, middle child Lawson, was in the same, uh, it was in the basement as I was teaching my daughter how to read and the phonics and the, the flashcards and everything. And he was just in the corner there playing quietly. Well, he became curious as to what we were doing. So he would get closer and just kind of listen and uh, ask questions here and there. But a few days, well, it was a few days, a few months later, he actually started to read on his own. And I just thought that was so amazing. I mean, there's more story there to, to tell you. But the reason I'm saying that is that I was home, I, I was trying to homeschool or really trying to, um, have the children at home but the reason was more to provide my own structured environment instead of trying to encourage this uh, this curiosity and I realized that my job really wasn't to provide structure so much as it was to provide an opportunity for my children to learn and here it was my my younger son learned how to read just by listening to me um, with my with my other daughter so anyway i wanted to share that with you because your reasons for homeschooling uh really will drive your approach your your motivation the resources and everything like that so do do ask yourself why is it that you're homeschooling what is it that you want to accomplish and the answers you give yourself for that will also uh, affect 
uh, let me get to this next one, will affect the, the homeschool group that you join, the homeschool board that you join, because not all homeschool programs are going to be the same. Oftentimes I get questions from families and, and they just, they don't know why, you know, one program could be different from the other. And I tell them that there are some significant differences between programs and there are some minor differences. So I just wanted to highlight some of the significant differences here uh, that may not be apparent because overall, all homeschool programs are required to do the same thing, which is process paperwork, essentially, right? So we all are going to process paperwork, but how do we do that and what kind of requirements are there? Um, but anyway, getting to the significant differences between programs, the biggest is really the worldview approach. Is it homeschool or home education, or is it just school at home? And I go back to that example when I was trying to uh, fumble my way through with starting off my own home education at home with my daughter. I really was, was recreating school at home, at least with the structure. Uh, when my younger son Lawson showed me that I don't need to do that. I can home educate and really focus on creating an environment where my child's curiosity can be um, addressed and explored. So again, will your program that you choose support you with homeschooling where you are in charge, where the parent is, parent is in charge, or is it going to be school at home? which is definitely not the same as homeschooling. So these are, that's the, the biggest difference, like who's in control. And you really do need to ask the programs. Um, I say to people, there's good news and bad news here in Alberta in terms of your choices for homeschool. The good news is that you have many to choose from. The bad news is you have many to choose from. So it can feel overwhelming, but if you start with some of these basic questions, I think it'll narrow down um, the process and, and take the burden off because most programs will fall, will fall in one or two camps. One will support you in homeschooling and one will really support school at home. So really ask that um, where you can kind of maybe a follow on to that is when you're asking programs about their view on this is ask what the role of the facilitator is. Is your facilitator or your teacher, we call them facilitators at the because we realize that you, the parent, are the teacher and the principal and the board of trustees and the superintendent. You make the call uh, at the, uh, I always get uncomfortable when parents call and ask if I, if they can have my permission or if it's okay for them to do such and such. And I tell them, uh, it's not up to me to, to do that. That's not an appropriate question of for me, and it certainly isn't a qu an appropriate question for any uh, facilitator because you're in charge, at least at the and some other programs um, likely that who have uh, already been uh, in this program that Judy's offering this these info meetings. Uh, definitely watch for the facilitators who come in and want to tell you what you're going to do. When they come in and drop a stack of workbooks and printouts and books and say, this is what you're going to do, that's not home education, that's school at home. So that's, a, that's definitely an area to ask about. What's the role of the facilitator? And what is it that is, quote, owed to the facilitator? At the, you are not accountable to your facilitator for what you do directly, right? The accountability is essentially once a semester with the evaluation, but that's not really an accountability issue. That, that's, that's another topic, but I, I really want to stay on the focus of your facilitators there to support you and to guide you and to be your consultant. So your facilitator is not a policeman to come into your house and you have to prove to your facilitator that you're doing a good job. That's not the role of the facilitator. And if your facilitator ever acts like that, um, I would definitely make, make plans for, for changing programs because that's not appropriate. So another area that uh, is a big difference is the, in the evaluations. So again, uh, with your facilitator, your facilitator is going to be the one who conducts the evaluation and it is required once a semester 
uh, your homeschool teacher facilitator will be required to meet with you either in your home or somewhere else. Usually at, at the, we meet with you in your house um, and we conduct an evaluation. And according to regulation, that evaluation is to look at two things, progress and achievement. Those are very vague terms, very broad terms. So the nice thing, more than nice, the, the great thing about how Alberta Ed has set up the evaluations is that you, the parent, actually dictate the boundaries for the evaluation. And that's done when you set up your program plan. Now, we haven't talked about the program plan, obviously, this morning yet, but um, that's part of your registration process. But I wanted to mention that, be, the program plan, because you actually set the parameters, the criteria, the topics for this evaluation. Your facilitator is not to come in and ask anything that's not on your program plan. So again, you as the parent are in charge. You're in charge of everything from start to finish to include what the facilitator even asks you for the evaluation. So those are some major um, areas where one program can differ from another. So I would definitely recommend you asking about those criteria, those items when you're out uh, choosing which homeschool group to join. Uh, minor differences would be administration, and sometimes it's not so minor, depending on how much paperwork they require, but minor differences compared to these larger issues in terms of you know, your philosophy of homeschooling. These minor differences include administration, you know, the, the paperwork that's required. Do they offer you know, direct deposit? Do they handle newsletters? Do they make the registration process easy or, or cumbersome? Reimbursement of funding. Um, even though it's minor, uh, that can be a big deal because, you know, right, especially now with the economy like it is, uh, money is just not um, flowing uh, if it ever did flow. So we handle reimbursements pretty much every week. There are some groups that handle it once a semester. Uh, sometimes once a year I've heard. So, you know, if getting that reimbursement quickly is a priority for you, you know, ask about that. Ask if you have purchase order numbers so you don't have to pay for things out of pocket. Um, you can use a PO number for that. Uh, just things like that. So those are minor. Uh, definitely focus on the major items. Um, I did want to say, going back to school at home versus homeschooling, uh, I would be uh, cautious about programs that offer um, school at home mixed with, well, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll skip that. If anyone has some, some questions about uh, that, I'll be glad to answer that later. But th there is some, some stuff out there that's quite questionable when they uh, talk about school at home versus homeschooling. Um, but I, I won't bring that up here. Um, so foundational belief here at the, just to repeat before what I said about the parents as, as the teacher, the principal, the superintendent, it's not just lip service. We really believe that you are the teachers, that we are here to support you, uh, whether that's in an unschooling approach, all the way to very structured approach like that Spalding method that I tried, which I will never try again. Um, <laughs> all for phonics, all for flashcards, but that Spalding method was tough very structured. So again, from unschooling to structured, we are here to support you, the family. We're here to give you ideas. If you ask us questions, we will definitely um, answer those questions, but we're not here to tell you how to do anything. We definitely want you to know that and also make a point to say, uh, to drive that home. That's not just a the thing. That is an Alberta Ed home education thing. Uh, to the point where the registration form, and I think this is important, I always make a point to try to say this, um, the, the registration form is not a registration form. It's actually a notification form. And I make a big deal of this because I want the parents to know, because most parents are coming from a non-homeschooling background. So I want the, the parents to be empowered and not just from an emotional level, but from really a legal perspective the registration form is not called the registration form. It's not called an enrollment form on purpose. It's called a notification form. And that's significant because you are not registering, you're not enrolling your child in a school. 
you are in fact creating a school there in your house, apartment, condo, townhome, wherever you are, by the Education Act and the previous school act, you are creating your own school, legally recognized school. So the form is called a notification form because you are notifying the government that you are creating your own school at home. So that's huge. And that goes back to the, the difference in beliefs between home education or just school at home. That's why we at the really, really want to make sure the families know where we stand on that because that's, that's foundational. So again, back to this slide, we believe that you, the parent, uh, are in complete control and that you have the right to make any decision that's for your child. And we're just blessed to know that we're part uh, of supporting you in doing that. So with traditional, so because of that, we focus on traditional homeschooling. Now the term traditional is more of a modifier that we use to distinguish home education from say shared responsibility, used to be called blended, or any other term that's out there. So the official term, uh, and this is a little bit of education part to make sure we get our lingo correct, uh, the official program is called home education. Yes, we use the word homeschool a lot, but in terms of Alberta Ed, the, the official term is home education. So to distinguish home education where the parent is in control of everything, 100%, we use the term traditional homeschooling because online learning is at home and it's school at home. So a lot of times families say, oh, we're homeschooling when the homeschooling is online learning. So that's school at home, that is online learning. What I'm talking about is, is parent controlled home education. So we are traditional, we don't offer uh, blended or, or um, let's say shared responsibility. We do have, our school division has an online program, uh, but the is focused specifically and solely on traditional home education. So again, to repeat, parents are the teachers. Parents have 100% authority and responsibility. We're not talking about online learning, shared responsibility, anything like that. We are supporting a family who is 100% in control of 100% of the learning. So that includes the instructional methods, the resources, your activities, how you do things, um, why you do things. And let me camp out on, on this one for a moment because a lot, again, going back to the fact that a lot of our families have not come from a background of homeschooling themselves. They're entering homeschooling with that paradigm of school, like I did, like when I started again with my own daughter. So I understand where you're coming from and, and your, your frame of reference. And that frame of reference oftentimes will lead you to think that you have to offer the four core and three electives, right? That's kind of standard. But that really is going back to school at home. So be careful of that thinking if that's not really what you want to do, or at least if you don't realize you don't have to do that. I get families who call and their son or daughter is really struggling with reading. And they're just so stressed. The parents are so stressed because the child can't read. And yet the family, the parents think that they also have to have science and social studies and history and all these other things. And I, I slow, I back it up and say, well, why would you do social studies and science when your child can't read? Um, let's focus the first semester just on reading, right? I mean, maybe not hundred percent on just reading, but the main thing you're doing for five months is reading and reading comprehension and those kind of things. And they're like, oh, we can do that? I'm like, yes, yes, you can. You're in complete control. If you wanna put everything else on pause, you can, you are in control. So when you have um, something that really needs to be addressed before you can move on, we'll do that. And that's the beauty of home education. You're in control. If you need to focus 100% of your time on reading for example or whatever you know fill in the blank it could be emotional behavioral 
Uh, it could be special needs. We have a family um, years ago when they came to us uh, on the verge of truancy because the children, uh, I think there were two of them, special needs, and they had basic, basic, like just basic needs that needed to be dealt with before learning could ever, ever be introduced. Well, the school wasn't going to support them in that. Uh, anyway, long story short, um, the family took control of what was going on, started home educating. The family knows what needs to be done, and they did it. And it had nothing to do with reading, writing, or arithmetic, right? So I mentioned those stories to say that we at the truly believe that you as the parent are in control. You get to make the decision. You can control exactly what you're doing. So if you need to focus on reading, great. Also, just a side note, when a student can read, that doesn't mean there's reading comprehension. So if you need to focus on the comprehension side, we'll spend five weeks, spend 10 weeks on the comprehension and then start introducing other subjects. So all that to say, uh, think outside of the, the standard paradigm of four core courses and electives. So you're in control, you can, kind of detox, <laughs> but sometimes you have to kind of unschool yourself in, in your thinking and go back to why you're homeschooling. Go back to that first question, why am I homeschooling? Is that answer to that question really driving what you're doing? So always go back to the answer that you gave yourself for that question. Um, I wanted to talk a bit about high school because oftentimes I'll get questions from homeschool moms who are just starting grade one homeschooling and they're already asking about high school, which is great. Um, so I wanted to let you know that there is light at the end of the tunnel, you know, 12 years uh, down the road when you're starting off in that grade one, that you can certainly earn that high school, your son or daughter can certainly earn that high school diploma uh, by homeschooling or by home education. So that's another question um, that you wanna ask. Uh, might be premature if you're in grade one or grade two, but when you're deciding your homeschool program for high school and even junior high, uh, I would start then, ask how your homeschool program, um, well, not how, if your homeschool program supports Alberta education credits and even the diploma. Some, hom some homeschool programs don't want anything to do with Alberta ed. That's the last thing they want uh, to deal with for administrative reasons, perhaps, or philosophical belief systems. They just don't want to have anything to do with Alberta ed. And I understand that and I respect that for sure. Uh, but I go back to what I said before about the wanting to support the family's choices. Well, when the family has a choice, of uh, offering that high school credit to the child, we wanna be able to support that. We don't wanna to have to tell the family, we'll go somewhere else, we're not interested in helping. So we wanna help you uh, guide um, your son or daughter through the requirements for earning either individual courses or course credits in high school or even the full diploma. So we do that, we do that through um, two main ways both of which are in what's called course challenges. That's the official term from Alberta Ed is a course challenge. So we offer two ways of challenging courses. The main one is portfolio. And that's as it, you probably have heard the word portfolio. It's not meant to be uh, exhaustive, challenging. You don't have to worry about you know creating this beautiful portfolio of photo album. It's just, Portfolio is a way for us to say, just demonstrate photos or narrative, write it up, however you want to do it and whatever's appropriate for the topic. But the portfolio challenge, uh, or sorry, the portfolio uh, documentation for a course challenge would be for your elective, exam, uh, elective and option courses like art or um, mechanics of some sort or you know, pro computer programming or baking, cooking, even a foreign language, if we can, depending on the foreign language and, and what we can have to help you out there. Um, but for core courses, your, your math, social studies, science, um, language arts, we have challenge exams. So those are exams that we've created, we've written, 
and that we will provide to you. So those are two ways of getting course credits at home, portfolio and credit by exam, essentially. Now, this third way is not something we, uh, we support, but we don't offer because it's from the ADLC, Alberta Distance Learning Center. Now, the ADLC is going through massive changes right now. So as of today, this is an option. Next year, two years from now, I don't know. Um, Albert Ed has not been friendly to the ADLC um, in regard to funding. So um, not sure what the ADLC will be able to offer a year from now. But for now, homeschool students have a unique opportunity to actually enroll in a teacher taught course from ADLC. Uh, it's like a blended shared responsibility approach to be honest, uh, but it's all under home education. So that is a unique situation for home ed students and there's no cost for the courses. You can use your funding uh, to pay for the course materials, which you get about an 80% reimbursement from ADLC when you return uh, the materials. Uh, so course challenges can help a student earn individual course credits and course challenges can help a student earn the complete diploma, all 100 credits, and within those 100 credits, uh, the specific types of, of credits that are needed. So we can help with all of that. Uh, the lady at our office who handles that is Natasha, and I can also help as well. So before I close, actually I wanted to go back to what I said before about reimbursement. Um, goes back to, I would say a minor difference, but sometimes it can feel major between programs and that is how they deal with reimbursements. Um, not only timing of reimbursement requests, but what exactly is reimbursed. Uh, Albert Ed offers this document called the standards, uh, but most home ed program administrators find it to offer many things, but not a standard. Um, I mean, on page three, it even says what's good for one student isn't necessarily approved for another. So it's tough to, to find a standard when that's the approach that this document takes. So some programs, because of that uh, uncertainty with what is and isn't reimbursed, will basically opt for the lowest common denominator, which is textbooks and maybe workbooks. Uh, we don't take that approach. We take the approach of uh, if it's for learning, if it supports your son or daughter's learning, then we will reimburse it. If there's a question, we'll let you know about it. But definitely wanted to, to let you know that there is funding available. Some, some families, again, not coming from a homeschool background, don't realize that they do have 800, for the next year, $850 to use toward um, buying their materials. And again, that's what that, PO, you could use a purchase order uh, to access as well. So anyway, that is it. I'm looking at the clock, it's about 20, 25 minutes. So uh, there's a ton more to say, obviously about homeschooling. I didn't get into you know, the different methods, which oftentimes uh, would be the next uh, item on a family's um, to ask about list. You know, The first is, well, how do I get registered? get the basics done, get the notification form in, get the program plan done, get my photo of a, a Alberta birth certificate or any kind of a, a other ID document in. But once your child is, I say registered or notified properly uh, with the documentation, what next, you know, what's the next step? And those are extensive um, conversations to be had uh, or can be extensive depending on what the family wants to do. So I'm certainly open to, uh, to questions at this point, but uh, wanted to let you know that there are options out there. I mentioned before, unschooling all the way to very structured. There's Charlotte Mason, which is a, similar to the classical method. Um, there's the option of going with a publisher's complete set of grade four or grade five. You know, you get a, a complete set of whatever grade level it is that you need. Uh, some people ask, should I go with a complete set from one publisher or should I pick and choose a little bit from here, a little bit from there? It just depends on your comfort level and what kind of style uh, you want to take. But anyway, let me, let me close there. Again, there's, there's a ton to say, uh, <laughs> but I'll, I'll stop there. And Judy, I'd, I'd certainly like to, to hear from those who are attending if they do have specific questions. Uh, absolutely. 
Um, everybody, uh, write your questions in the chat box and we can unmute you and talk about it. Um, Brett, I have a question for you. Okay. Um, did your mom come around being a school teacher? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I wouldn't say she's come around fully. She's pretty ingrained in, uh, yeah, the system, right? My daughter, um, when I talk about, you know, the offering course challenges and helping a student get the diploma, I definitely can walk the talk here because my oldest, my daughter, um, did earn her diploma through homeschooling. She did a lot of things. She did homeschool. She did private school. She did blended at the time. I mean, with she's our guinea pig, so she did just about everything that's on the menu. Um, and she did get her diploma. And uh, so my mom's like, well, that okay kind of attitude. So, but no, I, I have not won her over. Oh, gee, that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> Um, <laughs> at all oh dear <laughs> oh well yeah okay um allison um i'm gonna unmute you allison has posted some comments to you hi allison can you talk i sure can <laughs> hi allison hey, brett i'm allison i'm actually palace of the borders so located down in the lethbridge area in southern alberta Okay. And I'm now, our board is new moving into home education, so I've been hopping, Hello, in, Greg. Today. hopping into the rooms and introducing myself. We're certainly happy to collaborate and help and share, and um, certainly I'm, I'm glad to learn about your program. I didn't realize you guys were Elk Island, so um, uh, when I students coming and looking for uh, homes for home education. I usually try to find out where they're from and point them in the direction of the, the closest home ed to school in their area, but I do appreciate your points about finding the right fit. And a lot of your experience uh, reflects the experience I had when I moved into home education with my daughter. Mm. So. Uh, we do offer an online high school, so the teacher directed, uh, and do have home-based learners uh, as well as we support the students. Uh, uh, one. Um, I'm Golda from the Peace River School Division up in Northern Alberta, and uh, I've heard about your school a lot, Lee, and I, I know lots of people are really supportive of it up here, so I just wanted to say hi and, and introduce okay. myself. It was hi, nice Golda. to hear your presentation today. Oh, thank you. Well, thanks for taking the time to be here. Appreciate that. Let, let me mention this, I, um, and I'm not trying to, to step on toes, um, but for everyone who's new to homeschooling, I uh, wanted to get back to the terminology because there's home education, there's online learning, and shared responsibility. So those are the three official terms. Um, for a homeschooling family, when you're, when you're looking at anything that's being called anything other than home education or homeschooling, I guess that, that, that's so uh, common, um, we don't want to split hairs over that. But in terms of Alberta Ed recognizing a program, it's home education, shared responsibility, and online learning. Of course, there's classroom, but I mean, in the home ed community, those are the three main programs that we're dealing with. Just, just be aware that if it's not one of those three programs, if, if a term is being used that's not in one of those three, uh, you need to ask a lot more questions because the term that's being used is not a recognized term. So it's not describing something that is officially recognized. So if the term being used is not home ed or homeschool, um, online learning or shared responsibility, what is it right so yeah. again not trying to step on toes here but a lot of homes the reason i mentioned this is not necessarily to say anything bad about anything else but it's it's because homeschool families will come to me and say i didn't know what this was i it sounded official and it's in all the literature it's <laughs> in the brochures and i got into it and i thought it was homeschooling but it wasn't 
So I mentioned that for the homeschool parents to just so they don't spend a year in a program thinking it's home education when it's not. Um, that's that's my main point. There, it's not to say anything about these other programs. They're you know the qualities that they have because some of them are are creative and they're and they're good, but I just want the parents to know what they're signing up for. That's my my main point. Brett, I loved your description of the um, differences between home based school and um, you know home education. And um, Golda asked, "What are what's an example of a term that's being thrown out there that?" Um, is very confusing. And I was thinking of aligned is right. one that seems to be problematic for parents. Uh, do you have any other examples that, that, that are, that yeah. other school boards are putting in their brochures? It's not really couched in Alberta education language. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for asking. Uh, I know this is a sensitive topic. Um, I've gotten into interesting discussions with people in the past over these, these things. So again, I, I recognize this is sensitive. I'm not trying to uh, sling any mud here, but like you mentioned, aligned. And people say, well, what is aligned? I'm like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's not officially defined anywhere. So that means uh, school A can define it how they want and school B can define it how they want and they can, any other school can implement it however they want because it's not an official program. So mm -hmm. a line though, uh, in general, from what I can you know, gather from comparing all the different aligned programs, um, they, they offer a home ed, home ed ish program that's quote aligned in terms of outcomes to Alberta ed outcomes. Um, but anyway, so, so aligned is, is one topic or one term there's personalized learning. There's, and this is one that's really an oxymoron. It's teacher directed home education. Right. That's, that's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. that's like, you know, the jumbo shrimp joke, right? Um, you can't have it both ways. You can't have teacher directed right. and parent directed. It's yeah. one or the other. So if you see something like parent or teacher directed parent uh, homeschooling or parent, Parent, sorry, teacher directed home education. Uh, well, what, what is it? Um, it's one or the other. Pick one. So that's confusing. And there's a lot that needs to be looked at when something like that. So personalized learning, individualized learning, uh, teacher directed home education, aligned. Uh, How about blended? Blended is, is, has different meanings for different people too. Um, where yeah. blended used to be is it not um, blended is a school program that's half online, half classroom or? You You're right, Judy. Well, the confusion comes because, you know, like you say, Judy, in the, in the past, uh, Alberta Ed did have an official programming code call or name for blended. And that was code 610. If you mm -hmm. really, really want to get technical, you had code 611, 612 as well. But 610 was the official program code for blended. Right. Well, now it's shared responsibility code 610. Now the reason Albert Ed made the change from blended being code 610 to shared responsibility being code 610 is because in the States and I guess elsewhere around the world, the term blended meant like you just mentioned, Judy meant blending methods of learning within a teacher directed program. So some, and sometimes that's called upside down teaching or flipped mm -hmm. teaching. Mm -hmm. So, and that means, um, you know, instead of having the sage on the stage approach where the teacher's up in the front delivering all the information in real time. And if you missed class, oh, well, you, just, you know, get your notes from a friend kind of approach. The flipped or blended approach is one where the teacher does a lot of video recording of that one-way communication so that time can be spent in the classroom with Q&A and more of a tutorial method and model. So it's a blending of, of video to get that one-way information out to the students at their own time. You know, students can watch the video or listen to the audio at their own time, wherever, whenever, but 
but you save that really precious real time in space, um, in person uh, opportunity for more tutorial and one on one Q and A project collaboration things like that. So that's where the term blended comes from, and I don't know if Albert Ed is going back to blended or if they're going to keep the term shared responsibility. I don't know, but getting back to the the terminology that you should be look looking for, if if anything shows up that's not homeschooling. And really, it should be home education. But anyway, homeschooling, I mean, even on my slide, it says homeschool with us. So, I mean, it's ubiquitous, <laughs> right? Homeschool, home education. Um, yeah. But when I say home education, I'm talking about the recognized Alberta Ed program, Code 600. Yeah. Yes. If you get anything else, there's extra, okay, oh, again, not trying to step on money, on toes, but there's money involved usually when you find these other terminal terms. Mm -hmm. So if you find a program that's offering something other than home ed, online learning, or shared responsibility, and oh, by the way, there's more funding involved, uh, that raises a flag. That, that to me is reason for more questions. Right. I always tell parents that if you fill out a notification form, if it says notification at the top, that right. is your control, parent control. Right. Anything right. else, whether it says registration form, whatever, that's a school at home program and that's school controlled. That's right. That's a good point. Yeah, it's, um, that's good. It, it's a nice, and then they think, okay, I haven't filled out a notification form. And then we talk about, well, maybe you're not on a home education program, right? <laughs> right. Um, I'm going to, um, I actually have a, question for you, Brett, on um, clarification. Um, you know, when you were talking about high school, you talked about portfolios, challenging exams, and the ADLC option. Um, right. Currently, like how it is night right now, can parents um, uh, access ADLC courses that they can teach themselves under home education? Or do they need to farm the child out to the, the ADLC teacher? Yeah, good, good question. And as of today, the answer would be no, the parent can't get access to ADLC materials as the teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, AD, ADLC is very much a teacher directed environment. Um, so no, they, and the reason, the re when we have asked, because that's, that's a very good question, and we have asked that in the past, and I do understand ADLC's response, uh, but the response is pretty limited to, um, their, their, re their reason is limited to the exam answers, and they say that they don't want to open up and give to parents all the exams and quizzes and tests and answer keys because the, the ADLC doesn't have a, um, well, then they lose the security for all those answers and all those oh, exams. Right. So they figure, oh, well, if it gets out, and they, even with, and, and I do understand, because even now, exams find their way into chat rooms and get disseminated. So there's, there's cheating that goes on even now, and they're, and they're doing their best to keep it, keep a tight lid on it. So right. they just don't want access to exams just out there. And okay. I, was, I was talking to Jake Workington about that a few years ago when, when we had these meetings with ADLC on a regular basis. And I, my suggestion to Jake was, uh, and this was to open up his school's you know, uh, service opportunities, and that is to create a whole different set of exams and answer keys for home, the homeschool environment. And mm. this was a few years ago when when Jake's job was to be the liaison from ADLC to the home ed community. Now his job has changed and the ADLC's interest in supporting home ed has changed with all the other changes. But that was at a time when this would have fit very nicely into their mandate. But yeah, we didn't get any traction on that. So unfortunately, ADLC does offer two options, but they're both within a school environment. Okay. Not home. Right. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. It, yeah. it does make sense. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Any questions for Brett? What? Or, sorry. While we're waiting for any questions to to come up, I I would certainly encourage anyone who is brand new uh, to continue homeschooling, uh, continue with their their plans, even though you're probably overwhelmed. Uh, perhaps with this conversation, you've heard you know the the technical, you know, code 610, code 600, blended, this and that. And you're like, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to wade myself through this? And then Charlotte Mason, who's Charlotte Mason? You know, um, what's unschooling? There's like, you're, you're, uh, you're at the foot of a tsunami, right? Looking up at this wave that you feel is going to come crashing down on you and just wipe you out. But it really won't. Um, I've been there. It feels that way. Uh, but it won't. You'll ride the wave, but the wave will not crush you. Now, you'll have days when you feel like it's going to crush you um, and that you're just struggling to get up for air. You will have those days for sure. But overall, uh, you can do this. So start slowly. This is one thing that I, uh, matter of fact, I've, I say it so often to families. I, I put it in an email and I, and I saved it so I don't have to write it in a new every time um start really small uh i go back to the slide where it says that you're in control whether it's grade one or grade 10 start slowly if you're starting at the beginning of the school year give yourself till thanksgiving or beyond to really feel like you've got a handle on anything right this is completely new especially if you're coming from no homeschool background you got to give yourself as the parent, teacher, superintendent some time to, to fill your new position. And it's not just one position, several positions. You're a curriculum expert, even though you don't feel like an expert. You know, you're a disciplinarian, you're the phys ed coach. I mean, you're all these things all at once. And boom, day one, you're, you're it in all these positions. It will feel overwhelming. So that's why I say don't start with the four core and three electives. Start with the topic, the subject that is your son or daughter's favorite, like start with that one. If your son or daughter loves math or loves language arts, well, just start with just that one topic. Get in your groove, feel like you've, you're, you've established home routines, mom's okay, dad's okay, the kids are okay, and that could be November, right? Mm -hmm. So just start slowly. Don't overwhelm yourself. You don't have to get this thing done by Christmas and it won't be done by Christmas. So that's there, that's my awesome. advice. Start incredibly slowly. Start with one topic. Don't go out there and buy a thousand dollars worth of stuff for eight different subjects. Yeah. Get, get something really basic for one and, and, and do well and get, get in a routine and then start adding to what you're doing. That's, that's my advice. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and it's like, you know, parenting too. The first year is maybe yeah. a bit of a learning curve, but <laughs> you got it. And, and everybody homeschools from the time their children are born. So yeah. they already have six years experience under their belt. Right? Exactly. We have a question here from Jolene. So I'm just going to unmute you. Okay. Hi, Jolene. Hi, Judy. Hi, Brett. Hi, hi Jolene. Hi. Um, so my question is, 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 so you, you mentioned Elk Island, like for, for the, your school board, the, is it part of the Elk Island Catholic? Yeah, like, it's Elk Island Catholic how does that school work? is the full. Well, we, we are under contract with Elk Island Catholic to provide their home ed program. Oh. So I, I wouldn't even say that we, we are on con, I mean, it's, any any program like the wisdom roots uh, willow education limited mm -hmm. uh, streams you know uh, these are names that are internal names given to the home ed program of that respective school I and see. so at elk island catholic as in, in terms of their entire school division they're the ones who offer the home ed program and then V has been contracted to administer the, the nuts and bolts of it. Okay, I get it. Okay. So can you just talk about a little bit, like, um, we don't have a Catholic background. Like, we'd be coming from, like, just 
public whatever yeah. denomination would we still be a fit for thee or like can you talk a little bit about that yeah yeah certainly and i'm glad you brought that up because that is that is a, a uh i guess a that would be a question to ask uh, when you are deciding which homeschool program to go with most homeschool programs that are within uh, let's say a catholic or religious school of, of any sort are uh, typically open to families of all faith backgrounds, no faith backgrounds, um, because I go, go back to the, uh, the comment that we all have the minimum that we have to get done. And with, after that minimum has been met, um, that's where the differences come out. Well, uh, we don't, we don't, we don't take on, we don't view that we're out there to proselytize, you know, we're not out there to, uh, like, you're not signing up with us for us to teach Catholic doctrine or Christian doctrine or Baptist doctrine or whatever. Mm -hmm. You're, you're, you would be joining us because of how we can support you. Like, it's, it's, a, it's all about you. It's about your child. It's not about the the faith or non-faith of the program. And that's really the case for most religious program, based programs. I do know of one that require, that will only register students from a Christian family. Uh, oh. But other than that one program, I don't know of any other ones that are really um, like that at all. To, to give you an example, when I was a facilitator, um, I had families from uh, Muslim background, I had atheist backgrounds, um, and I really like going to the Muslim family because they had cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> she, she offered the best coffee and cupcakes every time I showed up. It was awesome. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, we, we got along splendidly. You know, my, my job, the job of the facilitator is not there, is not one that has anything to do with religion at all. It's, it's there to help the, the student. And uh, yeah, we, so no, there's, that's a long answer to your question of, of no, yeah. we, we serve families from all kinds of backgrounds. Right. Then, and this might be going off a little bit off track, but does it seem like historically, like, so like not all schools that say, so I'm from Edmonton are in the Edmonton area offer a home ed division. Why does it that's, seem that's like true. most, <laughs> most um home eds are come from a religious this is just a curiosity question come from a religious background you know what i mean this is yeah just curiosity, yeah that, that's an excellent question um and, and a great observation too and i believe it goes back to the the, the view kind of that worldview slash philosophy of home education where <laughs> we really believe the parent is in charge where when you look at a public school, again, this is not, I'm not saying this to disparage public school at all. It may sound right, that right. way. It's not yeah. meant to be that way. But when you come from a public school standpoint, well, the ATA will, will, now this is fact, the ATA does not support home education. They think that a parent is not qualified to. So that's kind of the, the mentality, I think, and that's, that would be my guess as to the reason why a lot of public schools don't offer home ed is because wow. at the at their core belief system, they don't believe a parent is capable or should be the one educating. Uh, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of literature to back that up um, mm -hmm. for a lot, mm -hmm. on a, on many different levels. But I think that's that would be the foundational reason that, that I see. Right, right. Very interesting. Well, yeah. Thank you for answering those questions. That was very helpful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks for being here. Brett, thanks. we have a question from Robin. Um, she says, do you offer any support to families who are starting kindergarten? And also, are you able to support families who are searching for French resources to provide some of their home ed in French? So I will um, um, unmute mute you, Robin. Oops, I think I did that. Hello. Hi, Robin. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Robin. Um, we are uh, just starting our homeschooling journey. So our children are five, three, and one, and uh, are we live rurally, and there's no French immersion in our 
well, technically there is in our catchment, but it's not feasible on a daily basis. Um, okay. And I would love to teach our children French at home, which we're slowly trying to do with me just speaking to them. Mm. And it just seems I'm having a hard time finding French resources. So um, that's one area that I would love to have support from whichever board we choose to go with, even though we're only starting kindergarten this fall. We're kind of just looking. We're trying to figure out this homeschool thing because I have no experience. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Well, with the with the homeschooling, uh, let me get to the, the part about kindergarten. Uh, at V, and I believe at uh, some other homeschool programs too, I, I won't mention names because I'm not really exactly sure, but I, I'm pretty sure there are others out there that will accept a kindergartner without funding. I mean, there's no funding for the kindergarten age student. We understand. But we, what's that? Uh, we understand there's no okay. funding. Okay. Sure. So, but we, we would accept the student as if that student had funding uh, in terms of the support, like you'd still get your visit once a semester. We were still, you know, able, not able, but we would still be providing uh, Q&A, you know, phone support through phone or email in addition to your facilitator. So we do offer that. Um, and the idea there is that we hope that we would serve you well enough during that year that you'd you know, stay with us um, for the future. Um, but in turn, and in terms of French resources, um, we, are you looking, uh, I'm thinking it's just learning resources, not, not that you want your facilitator to, to conduct the, the visit in French. No, the facilitator certainly wouldn't need to conduct okay. the visit okay. in French and actually be preferable not because my husband doesn't speak French. Okay. Uh, right. But right. Um, so, for example, French language arts and maybe social studies or science materials that we could do probably a mix of both French and English or even math that could be in French, but I haven't seen. And here, here we go with our whole, we're, we're coming, I'm coming from a school base and I'm definitely type A, so I'm <laughs> craving structure, but yes. definitely seeing the benefit of not having as much structure. So where we're at, or I'm at, maybe my husband's gotten ahead of me here, is that currently we're looking for structure within a language arts program and a math program, but hopefully we can be more child-led for the rest. Yeah, now. yeah. Well, uh, and let me say something about structure. Um, I, I, I'm similar to you, again, and I started with that Spalding method. So we created the school, you know, first child, we created the school room in the basement, all that kind of stuff. So that was a, I don't want to discourage someone who is, is structure minded, like I was, um, because that's, you got to start where you are, right? So if that helps you get to the point later where you're less structured, fine start start with where you're comfortable but just be like you are you're aware that it doesn't necessarily have to be structured but if that's mm -hmm. if that structure is going to give you peace of mind to start then by all means start there right so like you got to go with like go with the grain <laughs> your the grain yeah. meaning your your style as well and then you can adapt as well so you don't have to completely go opposite of what you feel is comfortable for yourself. Um, but anyway, so with the French resources, um, a, a general statement is we, we at V would certainly support your interest and help you find French resources. Um, matter of fact, the first place I would look, the easiest way, the easiest in province would be the ADLC. Um, not that I'm a big fan of ADLC materials, especially for grades one to six, um, but in terms of a starting point for learning resources that you could use yourself, um, I would start there. Now, that may sound contradictory to a previous comment I made about using ADLC materials in a home ed environment. The difference here is that I have been given permission from Jake um, to order materials, but not not uh, or uh, this is going to sound sneaky <laughs> and it's on recording so but i'm okay with that it sounds wait, 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 i can pause assignment was francophone students so she's quite fluent um so she could help as well so we would certainly 
support you in that. I just I can't think of anything right off the top in terms of publishers. There's there there are them. French publishers out there because I remember yeah. when my kids went into um, French immersion in school, they had the French version of the English math math book. I think it was okay. Math Quest. Yes, Math Quest. Okay. okay. At that time, um, you know, we were using the English version or the French immersion was using French. So there there are French publishers and there's a lot of resources on the internet. You know, right. Duolingo, there's an mm. incredible amount of resources. So um I guess I'm just not tech savvy enough to find them. And I'm also very like um a traditional in that I don't like my kids having very much screen time. Sure. So I'm not looking for the younger ages for online resources really. Yeah. Right, right. No, the resources I'm thinking of are all print. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a good point that you, you raise about um, wanting that type of, that level of support, because that would be like a second level, maybe even a third level support where the facilitator or the office of the home ed program is doing that research for you. We at the treat that as just part of what we do. That's, those are the service. And then it benefits us too, because next year we'll get another family with the same question and we're able to help them. So we view that as just part of the service that would be a question to ask any program that you're going to consider is do you do you actually you know offer that level of help i mean it's one thing to help with registration it's another issue to help uh with the program plan which is required that kind of help is required by regulation you the, the school has to give help for the program plan but beyond that you know what does the school provide and if they say well you know after that you're on your own well, that's you got you got your answer mm -hmm. or if you need help beyond that uh then you have to go with the school program you know you got your answer there too so that, that that's an area to, to look into for sure yeah thank um, you i i'm just going to add robin too that you, you know children can learn languages at any time in their life it's the brain processes it a bit easier during the early years but um it doesn't mean that nobody can learn a language, you know, when they're 18 or 20. And I, oh. I have kids who started at university and they learned well enough to go live in those countries and be functional. So, um, you know, it, you don't have to worry about it that if they don't get it right away, they're not going to ever get it kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Um, I think that's it for questions we have. I'm just going to check again, but I think, oh, oh, Golda mentioned a link to share um, about resources for parents, and it's a website called teacherspayteachers.com. So you could go on there and find resources too, Robin. Um, spend some of that home ed reimbursement funding. <laughs> so thanks, Golda, for that. <laughs> um, okay, so I think we're done questions. We probably should wrap it up. Um, All right. Brett, do you have any last words of anything you want to share with, with parents? I just want to encourage the families, applaud them with even considering home education, and certainly encourage you to, to pursue it and believe that like Judy said, you've been homeschooling your kids since day one. Uh, don't think this is beyond you. Uh, you can do this and find a program that will support you in what you want to do. Great. Well, thank you so much, Brett, for sharing all about yeah. Thee this morning. It was very educational as, as usual. So uh, <laughs> thanks. we're very- well, Thank you for letting me be here. <laughs> Okay, well, have a good week, everyone, and we'll see you in a month. All right. Um, bye, Judy. Bye, all. Bye. -bye.